What's good, Chaotic Nation? It's your boy, Chaos here, and today I'm continuing to rank my favorite Pokemon of each type. This list comes from my experiences playing through the Pokemon franchise over the past several years. The order of this series is based on my least favorite type to my most favorite type, and I will be covering all of the 18 types. A dual type Pokemon has the possibility to be considered for both types it has because if a Pokemon is one of my favorites, it should be considered for both lists. With all that being said, sit back and relax as we dive into the flying type. Number 10. Wingle. I've talked a lot about Draft League in these videos and I would be remiss if I didn't include my current mascot of my Draft League team on this list. When I was creating my newest logo, I tried to find teams that would work with some of my favorite Pokemon that also had ties to real life sports teams. I liked Wingle since I was a kid and really loved it in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. It has been a mainstay on most of my Hoenn runs since then, and even on the saves that I've used Swampert as well as my starter. So, it really earns a place if it causes me to use two water types on my team. I think Pelipper is a good Pokemon as well, and it is a premier rain setter for any sort of rain team in competitive. I also really like Finding Nemo, and the Wingo reminds me of the seagulls that go, My! My! Number 9. Rowlet. I was 100% Team Rowlet when Sun and Moon came out. Rowlet was a lot of fun to use and it is absolutely adorable. If you watched the previous installments of the series, you know that owls are some of my favorite animals in the world, so it was an easy choice for my Gen 7 starter. I really like the lore behind its evolutionary line as well, since I love creating and crafting theories. Of what I have watched of the Sun and Moon anime, Rowlet was my favorite member of Ash's team, and I really like how he gets into Ash's backpack, it's just really adorable. This is also such a really good design, and I hope I can use it more down the road throughout Pokemon. Number 8. Noivern. Noivern holds a special place in my Pokemon memories. X and Y introduced a feature called Wonder Trade, which I used when I got out of Lumio City for the first time. My first ever Wonder Trade was for a Noibat that I used on my team. Noivern was my MVP, crushing every Sky Trainer that dared to try and challenge me. It's also incredibly fast, which makes it really fun to use with a varied moveset and a lot of moves that you can throw on it just to be cheeky. I've always loved the design and the amazing take on a dragon flying type that is different from what we might expect from other dragon flying types. Number 7. Landorus Therian. I specify Therian because I always use the Therian form of Landorus. Affectionately named Calrissian after Lando Calrissian from Star Wars, Lando T led my team to great success in many teams. It probably is the Pokemon that has had the most influence on my enjoyment of competitive Pokemon. I like its versatility as a defensive pivot or just a powerful sweeper. Lando T was always a staple of my Sand team as a well-powerful weapon for the first season of the Premier Draft League. I've had many good memories with Lando Calrissian and I thank it for forging my love of competitive battling. Number 6. Gerardados. Yes, I typically pronounce Gyarados as Gerardados. Gyarados has always been a cool Pokemon to me. It looks like an incredible and powerful menacing Pokemon. My real love of Gyarados comes from Season 3 of the PDL where I drafted Mega Gyarados. It easily became something that everyone I faced feared when I battled them with my team, as it often just cleaved through my opponents. I don't think I've had as much success with any other Pokemon in a competitive like I have with Gyarados in PDL Season 3, as it holds the highest kill record on my team at 18 kills in one season. I also just like the idea of finding a static red Gyarados in the Lake of Rage in the Johto games. And I also find it fitting that it's placed there, and I remember using it in my first playthrough of Soul Silver, being one of my first ever shiny Pokemon. Number 5. Rayquaza. Rayquaza, also known as Rayquaque, is one of my favorite Pokemon in general. Emerald was the first game I had a legendary in, and it was the big green Snack Boy that caused mayhem for my opponents. Rayquaza has been one of the best shinies in the franchise, which also makes me really like it. I also really enjoyed it being a boss and subspace emissary in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Rayquaza is the ultimate Pokemon being ranked number one with its mega form, which is absolutely broken. I have just increased my love of Rayquaza over the years, and every new generation adds something new for it, making it one of my favorite dragon type Pokemon and one of my favorite Pokemon in general. Number four, Celesteela. Now, Celesteela is a very weird looking Ultra Beast, as I am well aware, but my enjoyment of this Pokemon comes from my experience in Draft League. Would you be surprised that a lot of my favorite Pokemon are ones I've used in Draft League? 
Solo Steel was my first pick in Season 1 of what is now the PDL, and it was an absolute unit dealing out massive damage and being a really awesome tank. It was 100% my MVP of the season, as I relied on it for every single match to carry my team to victory. I haven't had much use of this Pokemon since, because it's similar to Legendary Pokemon where you basically don't get them until the end of the game. So, you really can't use it throughout a playthrough. I really would like to get one in a randomizer at some point, and just see it wreck shot throughout a playthrough. Number 3. Butterfree. You already knew that Butterfree is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, making my top 10 favorite Pokemon list when I did that video. Butterfree has been on almost all of my Kanto teams at some point or another. It's a powerful special attacker with access to all the powder moves, making it a cool Pokemon with a nice utility. I have never really used it in competitive, but I would like to at some point. My love of this Pokemon made the anime episode Bye Bye Butterfree particularly challenging as a kid to watch, and it is the status episode in the entire franchise in my opinion. Butterfree also has the distinction of being the only Pokemon I've ever completely solo ran a game with, which just increases my love of this Pokemon even more. Number 2. Corviknight. Corviknight is such an awesome Pokemon and quickly became one of my favorites when Sword and Shield came out. I feel like Corviknight was just a great option for the story of Sword and Shield, and I really enjoyed using it. I also like that Corviknight is also the taxi Pokemon in the game, making it a necessary needs for transportation. The design of this Pokemon is absolutely fantastic, and it even surpassed Skarmory in my opinion as an awesome steel flying type. I really enjoy that its pre-evolutions are also flying types, which there aren't many of, so it gives this cool distinction to Corviknight in its evolutionary line. And number one, Charizard. Yeah, you already knew this was going to be number one. Charizard is the original Pokemon. My original starter Pokemon, my first starter Pokemon, my first Pokemon that I practically solo ran a game with, my first level 100 Pokemon, and many, many more accolades. Charizard has been with me since the beginning of my Pokemon journey and is a major influencer as to why I originally started playing. You had to see the box art of Fire Red and Leaf Green as a kid to understand what I'm talking about. I wish Charizard was a dragon type since it really was kind of made to be. Look at its design and tell me it's not a dragon. Also, Ash's Charizard in the anime had one of my favorite personalities of the entire series, always pushing Ash to become a better trainer in order to gain its respect, and also wanting to improve itself even if it lost, trying to learn from its mistakes and continue carrying forward. Charizard also started the Fire-type starters having a great personality arc, such as Infernape in later seasons. Well that is my list of my favorite Flying-type Pokemon. Let me know what your favorite Flying-type is in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content from me. And check out the description below for more ways to stay connected, such as following me on Twitter, joining us over on Twitch, and joining our Discord server. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm Chaos, signing off. Stay safe, and as always, burn it up.